In this video, I'll show you how to create special effects like fatalities, smoke bombs, and how to make tokens transform into undead monstrosities. Alright, so let's dive in. I'm going to maximize my left hand window here, this is my GM window, and to achieve these effects we use the FX commands in Roll20. Now, if you have a pro subscription, you've got this little button here in your toolbar, which allows you to draw effects and use them on the fly. So, like, I can create a beam of acid or, or something like that, or I could create a burst of frost at a particular location. And these are neat, but it's kind of a, a hassle to jump over to the toolbar to select the appropriate effect and then generate it in a timely fashion, especially if you want to keep the gameplay moving. So that's why what we'll do is automate these by creating some macros that generate the desired effect. And the first effect that we're going to talk about is the fatality effect. And so this is, you know, your player performs their signature move and they kill an opponent, right? So what we're going to do is generate a macro that will display some sort of effect and then put this red X through the token uh, that represents the creature that was killed. So let's start out here with one of the fatalities that I've generated previously called Fatality Blood. I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to zoom in on this so it's a little easier to read. Okay, so what this does is the first line here is slash FX, that's saying we're using an effect, Nova, and Nova is kind of the, the way that the effect will be displayed. So you'll see Beam or Burst or Nova, and Nova just means it's a very large explosion. The second parameter, Blood, is what's Nova-ing or what's bursting. So you can have Blood or Smoke or Holy or Frost. And then at selected token ID means perform this effect on the selected token. Okay, so far so good. The second line now is calling token mod. And token mod is an API script that allows you to programmatically manipulate tokens on the, the board. I've got a link down below showing how to install API scripts if you've never done that before. Um, but you do need token mod in order for this second part here. And basically what we're doing here is we're taking token mod and we're saying, all right, the selected token, we're going to set its status marker to dead. And that's what gives us that red X going through there. All right. So that is the fatality blood command. I'm going to pop this down into the description as well. So you folks can just copy and paste it. Um, but if we if we test that, you know, if I select one of my tokens here and we do this, you get that kind of explosion of blood and then you see that the token has the red X going through it. So you have one of your martial characters come up with their axe or their greatsword or whatever it is. They get the killing blow and they get that nice fatality effect. All right, but let's look at a couple of other types of fatalities here. Maybe you've got a cleric in the party who likes to kill things with sacred flame. So I've got a fatality holy for that. And... Again, we'll zoom in on this. You can see it's very much the same thing, just the FX, we're doing an explosion effect of holy rather than the Nova of blood that we did previously. All right, and then again, we've got the token mod command that's setting the status marker of dead. So just so you can see what that looks like, we'll test that one out, and you can see we get that of holy energy. So sacred flame just took that goblin out, something like that. Okay, but let's talk about some other types of fatalities here. You may have a warlock who finishes things off with Eldritch Blast. So, yes, I have an Eldritch Blast fatality too, but this one looks a little bit different. So I want to zoom in on this and, and talk about this one. We've got a beam being specified in that first command. So it's going to be like a ray of magic, so that's what we're using. But then we've got additional parameters here. It's not selected token ID anymore. Now it's target caster token ID. And then there's a second parameter of target foe token ID. So this first part, target caster token ID, this is going to prompt you to select the token that's doing the casting. So basically click on your warlock. And then the second one is click on whoever your warlock is killing. And then we use that same nomenclature down here. We're going to set that target foe to dead, right? So let, let's see what that looks like, right? So we're going to say test macro, 
All right, so choose target caster. And it's important to note, caster matches caster. So whatever you have as that second parameter, that's what's going to show up here. So choose target caster. Well, that's going to be my, my warlock here. Choose target foe. So who are we killing? There we go. We get the beam and then the red X. One more. Going to do a fatality fire breath. Okay, and this works very much in the same vein as the Eldritch Blast. We start out with a target. I'm calling it Fire Breather rather than Caster, right? So maybe you've got a Dragonborn, maybe you've got a Dragon, maybe you've got some other creature that's maybe imbibed a potion of Fire Breathing or something like that. So we want to have that token spray fire and kill their victim. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, again, let me make this guy not dead so we can kill him again. And we're going to say test macro. Again, choose target fire breather. Fire breather is what I've got right here. So my fire breather is this guy. My victim will be this guy. And there we go. We get the fire breath and he's dead. So these are just some neat, some neat effects that you can apply when your players kill off opponents. So you're going to know your players well. You're going to know their signature finishing moves. You can create custom effects to complement those so that when they do get a kill in, they get a nice little effect to accompany that. And I'll also put a note down in the description uh, to one of the Roll20 pages that gives additional documentation around the various parameters you can provide with the FX command so you can get explosions or fire or holy or frost or all the, the different possibilities there. All right, so the next one that I want to show you is the smoke bomb effect. And this is great when you want a character to make a dramatic exit. You know, you've got a drow rogue that the party is chasing down and they throw the smoke bomb and they vanish. You know, if we do this normally, we could just, you know, send this to the GM layer and there you go, they just vanish. That's boring. That's got no style. Let's give it some style, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when the drow throws his smoke bomb, when you narrate that, they actually do throw a smoke bomb and vanish. It just gives it so much more style and much more of a wow moment for your players. So let's see how we actually make this happen. All right, so I'm just pulling up my smoke bomb macro and let's zoom in on this guy. So we start out with an FX burst smoke, right? Which gives us our smoke bomb effect on the selected token. So whichever token is highlighted is the one that the smoke bomb is gonna go off on. And then again, we're using token mod but this time around, what we're saying is set the layer of that token to the GM layer. So that's what moves the token automatically to the GM layer and thus makes it invisible to the players. So again, just what that would look like. We highlight the token, test the macro, boom, and it's moved to the GM layer and we got the smoke bomb effect. So the last effect I want to show you is the transformation effect, where one token magically turns into another. And I mean, you could do this by hand, you know, if you watch this drow mage right here, I'm going to send him to the GM layer, and then I'm going to go to another token that's right behind him, and I'm going to send that back to the player's layer. And yeah, that works, but as you saw, it took a couple of clicks, it's not exactly clean, and I want it to be more dramatic than that. So that's where this trick comes in. All right, so I've just reset things. So let me show you the undead transformation macro so you can see what it looks like. Boom, we get this burst effect. The drow has turned into this undead monstrosity, whatever it is. Your players have a holy crap moment, and now they know that the fight is really on. So let's see how we make this one happen. All right, so making the left window big again. And let's just start out with the basic setup here. So I've got my drow mage, and my drow is on the object layer. The token I want him to transform into is currently on the GM layer. Okay, now let's pull up my undead transformation macro, and let's zoom in on this. Okay, first line, FX, burst, death. Okay, so death is what gives us that red and black energy effect that we saw when I triggered the macro. And again, we're doing that on the selected token ID. So this is very similar to what we saw with the smoke bomb. Uh, same deal with the second line. We're taking that selected token and we're moving it to the GM layer. But now the third line here, this is all new. So what's happening here? Well, what we need to do next after we move the drow token to the GM layer is move the undead token up to the object layer. And that's what this line is doing. But we're calling it 
by its actual ID. This ID right here is the ID of the undead token. Every token in Roll20 has its own unique ID under the hood. And we need to specify that in order to get that token to come up to the object layer. I'm also saying ignore selected, which means I don't want to do anything with the token that's currently selected. Leave that alone. The only one I care about is the one I've specified. And then I'm going to set its layer to objects. So I'm bringing it up to the object layer. Now, there's a special command you need to run in order to retrieve this ID. And the way you do that is you select that token, whatever it is. So I've got it highlighted right now. Go into the chat and you want to type in at curly brace selected pipe token underscore ID. I'm going to put this in the description as well. And when you press that, you get this value returned. Um, it's worth mentioning that depending on how your lines break, if I scoot this over a little bit, it happened to me earlier where the dash here was actually on the top line and the rest of the identifier was down the bottom. So the token usually starts with a dash from what I've seen. So make sure you capture that and paste it in accordingly. So if you run this command exactly as it is, I'll have this down in the chat, it won't work because you probably don't have a token with this value. So run this uh, selected command ID command right here and that will return the value for you you can replace it all right and then once you've got that all you want to do is move your drow mage token on top of the undead token like so trigger the macro and now you know you can tell your players he completes his transformation into a lich or whatever it is and you go from there so this is great for those you know you haven't even seen my final form kind of boss moments where you can switch one token into another. Now, one last thing that I will mention is I've had a couple of times where copying and pasting didn't work perfectly. Like I would copy and paste the smoke bomb macro to make the undead transformation macro. And for whatever reason, it didn't work. So what I found I had to do was copy each line in individually and test them one by one. So like I would have just the FX burst death command here. I would test that. And then after I did that, I would put in the second line like this. And then I would just test that. And then I would put in the final line and then test that and then save. And then everything seemed to work fine. So if you are having issues where you copy and paste these things and for whatever reason they're not triggering, give that a shot because that really helped me. Anyway, I hope you found these helpful and I hope you enjoy implementing them to help augment your player's experience. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.